Let's talk about ASX and ST motifs and why they are important. In this video, we'll consider what they are, different types of ASX and ST motifs, ASX and ST turns, then ASX and ST motifs. Then we'll talk about factors that can stabilize these. Finally, we'll talk about the hypothesis for how these may impact prion diseases. Types of ASX and ST turns a motif. Motifs are based on their hydrogen bonding patterns. They're named after the parent amino acid, which is at a key position. So an ASX turn can be based on aspartic acid, D. It can be based on asparagine, N. An ST turn can be based on serine or threonine, T. ASX motifs contain the corresponding turn. The difference between turns and motifs is confusing, so let's talk about what ASX and ST turns are. Conventionally, if we take a peptide and we start numbering from a key amino acid, and here I'm choosing asparagine as the ith residue, then towards the C terminus, we label I, I plus one, I plus two, and I plus three, and I plus four. If that peptide folds such that the carbonyl of the ASP side chain hydrogen bonds to the I plus 2 NH main chain, that forms a 10 membered motif. And that's a very special number of atoms in peptide chemistry in my experience. An ASX turn in this case. That's an example of an ST turn. The threonine is using the side chain, oxygen, to hydrogen bond to the main chain, I plus two residue. That turn is not necessarily helical. Let's watch it fold. We take a linear peptide with explicit water molecules and run molecular dynamic, and eventually we will form that hydrogen bond between the ASP side chain and the I plus two N8. What's the difference then between ASX turns and motifs? If that motif is going to be helical, then the ASP takes on a very special significance. And we'll see what the end cap is in a second. In peptide helic nomenclature, walking towards the C terminus, we label the residues N1, N2, N3, N4, and so on. Let's watch a peptide fall. It's searching different conformations. All these will be populated in solution. And eventually, that side chain will lean over and form hydrogen bonds. Turns have one hydrogen bond, motifs have two. We invented nomenclature in our group to illustrate what those hydrogen bonds are. The main chain CO of the ASP N cap is a hydrogen bond acceptor. The N4 NH is a hydrogen bond donor. And on the right hand side, the side chain of the ASP N cap hydrogen bonds to the main chain of the N3 residue. And there it is, folded up into a helical conformation. The phi dihedral is the one looking along NH to C alpha. The psi dihedral is the one looking from C alpha to CO. Residues inside a helix have approximately a phi psi angle of minus 60, minus 40. I don't know what the phi psi is of the N cap. It's not minus 60, minus 40, because the N cap deviates from helicity. To summarize, the first residue in a helical ASX motif is N1. The N cap is very special because after this, all the residues have phi psi dihedrals in the ideal helical ring. From N to C, the residues are numbered N1, N2, N3. And ASX motifs have two hydrogen bonds, turns have only one. 